Hey y'all, welcome back to another Science Olympiad Astronomy Review. Um, check the description for more, let's get into it. Okay, so we observe the calcium K line of a star spectrum, and it seems to be slightly greater by this O5 um, compared to what we predict. So we want to find the velocity of the star that's moving towards or away from us. So first, what we can actually do is that um, since the spectrum seems to be greater than what we predict, we know that the answer is going to be away. Um, that's how redshift works, is that redshifting essentially makes it so the spectrum becomes a little bit wider uh, due to the relative velocities. So then, okay, so that gives us one component of the answer. It's going to be either one of these two options. So let's actually go into our calculation. Um, okay, so first off, the way we write this is that uh, z, the z shift for low z, for small velocities is equal to v over c, which means that z times c is approximate to our velocity. There is a relativistic formula for this, um, which is a little more complex, but uh, you can tell that since we're dealing with these types of meters a second, we can we can assume a smaller approximation um, on the z shift. Okay, so then uh, working with that approximation, uh, let's write that we need to find what z is. So z is going to be equal to your lambda emitted uh, minus lambda observed. This is like your stationary lambda all over your lambda observed. So then that's going to be equal to, uh, here we have 393.45 minus 393.4 divided by 393.4. And this is going to be equal to... Uh, let's do that real quick, this calculation. 393 minus 393.4 divided by 393.4. So the point is you get a super small decimal. Uh, this is 1.27. 1.27 times 10 to the negative 4. That's your z-shift right there. And now to get uh, v, we just multiply by c. So then v is equal to 1.27 times 10 to the negative 4 times 3.08 times 10 to the 8th meters a second uh, times 3 times 10 to the 8th and when you do all that you get that v is about 38,000 meters a second uh, so that's your final answer the quick thing to note is that since this result is positive that tells us that the star is moving away from us if we got a negative result that means it's moving towards us um, that gives you your answer b Okay, next question. Uh, star's apparent brightness is this much, absolute magnitude that much, and we want to find the distance to the star. Uh, we give you a hint of for what equation you want to use. Okay, so quickly, distance to a star is 10 to the apparent magnitude. This is apparent. Uh, minus m, your absolute. You can't read this, but we're writing it in there plus 5 divided by 5. That's just rearranging the distance modulus. This is the equation that I like to memorize. Um, so we have the absolute magnitude uh, to get distance, but we need the apparent magnitude. And it looks like we're going to use this equation for apparent magnitude. So that is m1 minus m2 equals negative 2.5 log 10 of f1 over f2. And so we want to use this equation to compute that and we're given the sun's apparent brightness. So unfortunately, I think this does require us to know the sun's uh, apparent magnitude from memory. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it should be about negative 27. Uh, let's look that up. It is negative 26.74. Okay, so yeah, this problem is still doable, but you do need to know a little bit of information. So then we can write m1, the magnitude we're concerned with, is plus 26.74. That's doing a negative 26.74 right there. Just double negative equals negative 2.5 log 10. And now we need to do F1 over F2. So F1 is this value, 6.86 times 10 to the negative 10 uh, watts over meter squared, the units cancel, and the denominator here is 1350. So doing this computation will yield us the apparent magnitude. Let's go ahead and do that on our calculator. Uh, one second, please. And then minus 26.74. So then from this computation, you get M1 is about equal to 4.0. And so if M1 is equal to 4.0, we can plug it back in here. So then 
fifty is equal to ten uh, four minus what is it one point three four plus five divided by five. So let's do that real quick. Four minus one point three four plus five divided by five ten to that value, and if you do that, you should get uh, around. Let's let's double check that real quick. Four minus one point three four plus five divided by five, 10 to that value, there we go. Okay, you'll get around 34 parsecs. I uh, had a quick calculator error, but yeah. D here is equal to 34 PC. Um, but we're pretty far off from the other answer choices, so you know that's the correct answer. Okay, now let's go to the next question. Uh, formula, I wanna say quickly that the next two questions we have are a little bit sillier. Um, not too much astrophysics you'd memorize, as much as just what can you pick off pick off um like from the problem statement um so yeah not too don't take these questions too seriously a uh, formula for the transit duration is given by this right here um we have period r star r planet r the radii and a is the semi-major axis of the planet's orbit so what does the formula reduce to if r star is one solar radii and a is that very small distance orbital distance right there we're assuming that r star is much, much greater than r planet. Okay, so looking at this equation, d equals p over pi, it's a reduction, so we're probably going to be reducing something right there. Uh, arc sine, let's see what this is. So then r star is one solar radii. I believe one solar radii is this in meters. That right there. Uh, it might vary a little bit, but that's okay. And then we're assuming that r star is much greater than r planet, so we're just going to add zero right there. And then we have this in AU. So let's do 0 0.00465 uh, times 10 to the, that's 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. Okay, now let's see what this gives us in our calculator. Um, hint, hint, it should be something pretty nice to obtain 11th. Okay, so then when you do this, uh, my calculator gives me that this is basically 6.86 times 10 to the 8th divided by 6.975 times 10 to the 8th. Um, that's pretty dang close to 1, so that's probably some important information. Yeah, that's basically 0 0.98 right there, is what that gives you. So if we take the arc sign of this value, uh, you'll get uh, around a value. So we're going to assume right here that this is basically the arc sign of 1. Um, in this approximation, there might have been, I might have understated this value or something, or understated this value, but this arc sine should yield basically arc sine of one. Um, arc sine of one, if you look at the unit circle, that's going to be an angle measurement, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this should yield pi over two. It's asking you what value uh, of sine, what angle of sine yields one. And so that's going to be your theta measure uh, right here of pi over two. So then we have d equals p over pi times pi over 2. Pi is cancel, you get d equals p over 2. So it's like a, some form of a limiting case or a unique case uh, to be able to solve this problem of how the formula reduces down to. Um, I think the key part is just recognizing this is going to be something clean because you, you don't have pi in your answer. So it should be something a little bit cleaner. And this basically approximates to 1 when you have these two considerations, solar radii, and the semi-major axis. That also basically tells you, um, like if you multiply one AU by this, you get a solar radii. So that's a conversion rate, um, which I believe is around like 205 or something like that. But anyways, let's let's go on to the next problem. So final question of the day, uh, we have an exoplanet with the density get function given by that. Um, we want the mass contained within a shell of the exoplanet. Um, the formula for the mass of one shell can be expressed as the following. And then it tells you how to integrate, how, what this integral is basically equal to. So I think we're basically just plugging this into an integral uh, just to screw around a little bit. So then m of r is equal to the integral. Let's see, 0 to 500 meters, 500 meters of 4 pi r squared times p of r. p of r here is 3 r squared dr. And I think that's it, essentially. Uh, I don't see anything else that we really need to be concerned about. So then m of r is the integral, or let's write 12 pi, integral of r to the fourth dr, 0 to 500. Uh, okay, so I guess I'll, I mean, you know that this is just going to be r to the fifth if you integrate this 500 to 0. 
of 12 pi. So the mass enclosed in uh, 500 meters is going to be, I guess I should write this as 500 here too, is going to be equal to 12 pi times 500 to the fifth divided by five. Um, let's do that in our calculator real quick. Uh, times 500 to the fifth. And so we're getting around 2.356 times 10 to the 14th kilograms. 2.4 times 10 to the 14th kilograms around this value, and that seems like it's going to be this answer choice right here. Uh, these two are a little bit too far off the dot. Okay, thanks y'all. That was a pretty quick one this time. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know down below. I'm more than happy to help, but otherwise, take care and keep studying astronomy.